This is me, State Louisville. A couple eight and four teams getting it on at the Tax Slayer Bowl. And Matt, before we let you go, for anybody out there that uh, maybe is focused on another conference, another team, but once bowl play hits, and this is what I find interesting about people's perception of bowl play being these are exhibition games, they're meaningless. Well, when you think about it, and Mississippi State's actually in a unique position having played the Egg Bowl when if you wanted to watch college football on Thanksgiving night, you had to watch the Egg Bowl. But otherwise, the rest of these teams, even if they're playing big conference games, there's 6, 8, 12, 15 other games on at all times. Sure. You get to postseason play, and you're the only game in town. If Football <laughs> Nation wants to watch football, they're going to watch Mississippi State Louisville. So I would think that that would be motivation for these players. That said, I, I just want you to set us up for a couple guys that uh, you enjoy watching that uh, we can look out for offensively and defensively for people that are watching Mississippi State for the first time. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a, I'm, I'm glad you bring it up because I'm going to mention one guy that on the defensive side that today I read some NFL you know insider reports that he's definitely looking into his options and maybe going ahead and turning pro early, and that's a defensive end, Montez Sweat. Montez, this is his only year so far at Mississippi State. This is his junior year. So he came from junior college down at Colin Community College. But he began his college career at Michigan State, played there at Michigan State, and then transferred out. So he's not completely, you know, inexperienced. This isn't his only year of experience at this level. He's this really long, tall, lanky, athletic pass rusher. And, you know, he's listed at 6'6", 244, I think. He's every bit of 6'6". He's like one of those basketball players who's 6'6", but has like a seven-foot wingspan. He's just this really long athletic guy. If you, see, if you haven't seen State play, picture um, – I'm trying to get the name right – Jason Taylor. Picture Jason Taylor out of Akron years ago that played for the Dolphins Hall of Famer. Exact same size and weight and length and plays the same position, that kind of guy. Uh, maybe not quite as fast and as quick as a Jason Taylor, but similar anyway, so you can picture him. And he wears number nine. He led the SEC in sacks this year and is up there in tackles for loss and kind of went about that quietly. He's an all-SEC-er. And, yeah, he's legitimately looking into his options of, should I come back or have I topped out and I need to go ahead and bounce to the NFL so we'll know soon. If you watch State in this game, he's going to be a big part of how they game plan it and what they want to do. And Louisville will have to game plan around him. And, you know, another guy that I think everybody needs to kind of keep an eye on is on the, on the offensive side, the offensive tackle, Martinez Rankin, number 55. He's a senior offensive tackle. Came into the year on everybody's draft prospect lists. At one point in the year, had to miss a couple of games because of injury, and so the buzz about him quieted down a little bit. Well, then when he came back, that buzz is starting to generate again, and people are saying that he could be a high-round draft pick on the offensive line too. So that's a couple of guys uh, to keep an eye for. And, you know, as a former quarterback, Mark, I, I very seldom am, you know, everybody talks about the quarterbacks, right, wrong, or indifferent. Everybody watches the running back. But I know for a fact that the games are won and lost every Saturday right down there on that line of scrimmage. And so look for number nine coming off the edge on defense and then look for number 55 on offense and see if he can protect the QB. Montez Sweat, uh, 12 and a half tackles for loss. And as Matt mentions, nine and a half sacks to lead the SEC. And, and Rankin, I, I love it that you bring up an offensive lineman because they don't have any stats. So that's... <laughs> Number one is that people can't relate because they can't look up stats and they're the only people on the field. We even have stats for defensive players and everybody now. Um, so they can't relate to the offensive lineman just because they can't see him on a stat page. But uh, so I, I love the breakdown on the offensive lineman because I, I think, for example, it's a it's a crying shame that there are as many quarterbacks or maybe even a few more in the Pro Football Hall of Fame as offensive linemen. Well, it makes out automatically no sense because you've got five offensive linemen on the field to every one quarterback. Should be a five to one ratio in the Hall of Fame, for example. So these guys don't get anywhere near the due that uh, they deserve for getting the job done up front. So no question about that. No question. No question about it. And they, um, they all, offensive linemen always have the most fun. I know people don't necessarily realize that. 
they think the DBs who do all the trash talk and have the most fun. No, offensive linemen always have the most fun. And the reason is because they're always together. They don't have to hang out alone. They're not on an island on the field. You, you always see, if you see one of them, there's at least two or three more. And, you know, in their meeting rooms, it's not three guys like the quarterback's room. There's all this pressure. It's a room full of 15 guys, and they're all having a good time. So if I could go back and do it again, I would just eat and eat and be an offensive line. <laughs> if I could do it over again. Well, Matt, I got to say, as an old codger, I'm not real fond of these NFL celebrations that they're allowing now with like 22 people in the end zone doing all sorts <laughs> of theatrics and yeah. uh, choreography. But at the same time, it allows the offensive linemen to celebrate the touchdown that they paved the way for. <laughs> I, I always like hated it. that, that uh, you'd, you'd have some prima donna wide receiver going crazy in the end zone, and uh, he got two blocks on the edge in addition to the quarterback getting his pass protection. Yeah. The offensive linemen just kind of barely can make it down the field. You know, they're just kind of <laughs> turning it off to the bench, or, you know, they try to get in on the celebration and the wide receiver is passing them by. Um, and I so, agree. Uh, I'm so glad that they can get in on it. I love that commercial where uh, uh, the guy's standing out there on the field and they've got Joe Staley from the 49ers in the end zone doing a whatever celebration. And he said something along the lines of, the chance of Joe Staley actually scoring a touchdown is less than zero. However, <laughs> and so, yeah, he ain't going to score, but at least let him celebrate. I agree. I like that too. All right. If enjoyed talking Mississippi State football with Matt Wyatt from Super Talk Mississippi, his show is head to head, three to six central time. You can uh, catch it on the app, Super Talk Mississippi or supertalk.fm online. Matt, it's been a great time. We appreciate you stopping by and giving us so much time. My pleasure, Mark. Great to talk to you.